9% of all adults in Colorado have a concealed weapons permit. More and more of them are women. To talk about it, from the Denver Post, Krista Kafer, glad to have you here. And Elizabeth, I want to make sure I got this right. Houtman, uh -huh. you own uh -huh. a company called Colorado Boot Boots. Colorado Boots. You do boot sales. Not exactly. Cowboy boot sales. Not exactly. Fireman boots. Not exactly. What kind of boots do you sell? I train people how to use their firearms safely. That's what While I do. While wearing boots. If they want to. Okay. No flip-flops. Right. So you're, you're, you're a, a gun instructor. You yes. teach people how to yes. shoot. You help people mm -hmm. get certified to uh, uh, get their, what we call CCW, or concealed weapons permit. Correct, uh, correct, permit. yes. How many, how many people are women as most of your, your, your clients? Well, about 80% of my students are women. Really? And can, so uh, can, I teach. Can you put my name on like a cork board up there or something? <laughs> I, I'd be happy okay, to if you good. need the help. Yeah. Okay. I don't think he needs the help. I need the help. Boots and dating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boots and dating. That's going to cost extra. All right. Well, we'll worry about it. All right. You and I have talked about this many times personally. You're you're a target shooter, but you're you're not a crazed gun nut like many of us no, are. No, I'm I'm really not that into it. I just I I. I like, I like firing with my gun. I like to you know, occasionally go with friends and fire their guns. It's fun. It is an easy, fun thing to do here in Colorado. I can see the hate coming out of your eyes. I know. It's people like you that make the stereotype of what gun owners are. <laughs> the beard, the bill cap hat, the fatigues, the camouflage. You haven't camouflage. seen my I bunker. I haven't seen your bunker. I know you'd like to, though. I'd like to. I've asked many, many times. All right, why, why is there, am I wrong to say there is a growth of women owning guns now more than we've seen in ever. Well, I think more women are getting into the shooting sports. Definitely, definitely. And the manufacturers are responding with tools that work better with a woman's physique. I did uh, 25 out of 25 on trap last time I fired. The thing is, though, is that I can't handle a 12 gauge. I need a 20 because it's too heavy. And you laid the trap down on the floor and just shot it. So that, that, that helps the score. I've, I've done that too. Yeah, yeah. See, you're talking about things in a gun way, and people who aren't gunnies have no idea what you just said. It's like talking to a computer geek who, who talks. Well, with heat and trap is when you've got a, like a moving thing and you're firing with a shotgun. It's, it's tough because uh, you're, not, you're not aiming. You're sort of moving the gun and firing, and it's fun. And I think people don't understand this side of, of, of shooting is that it's a sport. You know, there is the personal protection angle, but then there's the, hey, let's go shoot some cans or let's go shoot some clay pigeons. And honestly, that's my favorite part. There is, and, and you're right, there's two different parts. When you're talking about skeet shooting or trap shooting, you're shooting a uh, flying clay pigeon, sometimes a real pigeon. And, um, and it's, it's a very different thing than, than target shooting. Why are more women getting involved in shooting and why are more women carrying guns? Well, I think a firearm levels the playing field. Mm -hmm. If there's a situation where you need to keep yourself or your family safe, a firearm will level the playing field, uh, regardless who your assailants are. Have you found people who've come to your class who are really nervous about the gun itself? I mean, have you had somebody who, uh, and it's not a secret, I used to be anti-gun a long time ago, uh, and, and now I have my own arsenal, and I'm very glad I do. But there's a time where the first time you experience shooting, it can be scary. Honestly, that's my favorite student, is somebody who has this preconceived notion that it's just going to go off or just be a, a problem. And they learn that they can conquer their fear and they can be in charge of this tool. Uh, it's, it's very empowering. It's a very good feeling. And it's a lot of fun for me as an instructor. There's something here that's really dangerous, is that being a gun owner, it's really easy to be stereotyped. Mm -hmm. The NRA, mm -hmm. very easy to stereotype. Evil people. When Women like you start espousing the reasons to, to have a gun or why it's fun. It takes away the fear. It takes away the stereotype. It's dangerous. And you're a dangerous woman. You've known this to begin with. Well, I've always known how, that. How do you talk to people who don't understand how you have a gun, why you have a gun, who are scared? How do you get them from here to where you are? Well, a gun is a serious thing, as you know. I mean, like mm -hmm. a car. It, it's, a, it's a serious thing that can do harm, but it also can be a lot of fun or it can be good for self-protection. I think if you sit down and just talk to people, hey, I enjoy uh, shooting clay pigeons or I enjoy shooting targets. I also like the fact that I've got it as personal protection if needed. And I think if you walk people through that, they realize that it's just, it's just an object. It's but the it, person it's a, behind the object that matters. It's traditionally been seen as a guy thing. Mm -hmm. Target shooting has been a guy thing. Hunting has been a guy thing, with some exceptions. Annie Oakley. Annie Oakley, the exception. So 
Is, is that exception changing? I think so. Oh, definitely. How so? Definitely. Well, I think more women are, are living on their own. They want to be able to protect themselves. I don't rely on a man for my income. I don't rely on a man for my home upkeep. I don't rely like on a man. Like you ever relied on a man for your home upkeep? <laughs> <laughs> I take care of myself, but you take care of yourself in all areas, and security is one. You also have girlfriends who probably have no idea why you do what you do. How do you explain it to them? Well, I mean, usually I invite them to come and learn. The, the most stubborn people are the ones I want to get at my kitchen table looking at firearms, the ones I want to get in my backyard shooting, just to try it. You shoot in your backyard? Uh-huh. I have a range. I want to go to your house. That's awesome. Yeah, you should come to my house. It's yeah. fun. Because yeah, you've tried that in your condo, and it, it, didn't, it didn't work as work. much. It didn't work as well. Put some tin cans in the parking lot. But what, what is the reluctance to coming there? I mean, they obviously know you. You even have a better way to get to, to women who feel uh, guns are a danger than most people because you're, they know who you are. They mm -hmm. know you do this mm -hmm. for a living. What's the reluctance? Well, eventually they're curious. And I say, look, what you've learned on TV isn't true necessarily. What you hear isn't necessarily true. And before you make a judgment about this area, it would be like me telling you how to do this show. I don't know anything about this show. Trust I me, neither do I. <laughs> I couldn't come in and say, light it this way, do it this way. And I think we have people out there making laws and rules for us who don't know. And I, I, my goal is to educate as many people as possible in this area so that uh, they have a better understanding. What you said hits me because when I see politicians uh, spouting off about gun regulation, and it's so obviously they don't know what they're talking about. When Diana DeGette said, we need you know, to limit magazines, and somebody said, well, what about the magazines that are out there? Well, once you use them and the bullets are out, then, oh, then they'll, they'll, they'll be gone. They'll, we'll throw them away. We'll throw, right. She came back and said, well, she meant clip. No, we don't no, throw those no, away either. No, no. And so she didn't understand that a magazine is, is like a little Pez dispenser. When it's empty, you don't throw it away. You can fill it up with candy. And when Hillary said of... Um, um, what did she, she just say recently? Oh, if the, uh, Las the, Vegas had a, if the Las Vegas shooter had a silencer, then nobody would have heard it and they wouldn't have been able to find him. But you've been watching too many spy yeah. movies. There right. are no silencers. It would have lowered it from a jet engine sound to a jackhammer sound, and that's all. It's a suppressor. But it, it tells me they know nothing about what they're, they're talking about. Um, yeah, they're ignorant a lot of the time. And, and I understand the emotional appeal of saying, well, we're just going to ban guns, or we're going to ban certain kinds of guns, and then no one will ever get hurt again. The problem is, is that's an emotional response. At some point, people need to be reasonable and say, hey, what, what is really going on in these circumstances? And can we, if we limit the rights of decent people, will it have any effect whatsoever on these bad people? And I would say it won't. Women, I believe, are the best ambassadors for gun rights. I, mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, I think uh, we approach protecting our family, that, that mama bear protection, as a serious responsibility for our family and our children. And uh, I think some of the women shooters I know have really turned back the ego. It's not about the big gun. It's not about big noise. It's not about... Uh, the macho, it's just about, look, this is the tool I'm going to use to keep my family safe. This is what I'm going to use to keep me safe. And it's a much softer entry mm -hmm. into it. You're not bulldozing, bulldozing like a Rambo into it. Because it doesn't have to be that. You yeah, know, yeah, and, it does. and that's, yeah. that's yeah. <laughs> you know, it's even though when you shoot a machine gun, it does feel a little bit like that Lara Croft, you know, <laughs> kind of fun. <laughs> but uh, it, it doesn't have to be. It can just be a tool, just like I have a wrench and a hammer and a fire extinguisher at my house. I think this is the most, and I keep using the word danger. For those people who want to regulate guns, this is the biggest danger. Because once people get over that first hurdle of fear that, that you're able to do, then all of a sudden discussions on, well, you know that nasty gun, that, that machine gun that's called an AR-15? It's not really as nasty. In fact, it's exactly the same as this one that's made out of wood, has a wood stock. It just looks meaner. And mm -hmm. you don't get that. Let, let's, we've only got a minute left, but bring it, bring it to the passion that's going on right now after this last terrible mass shooting. 
What, what has been your message out of all this? My message has been that we need to hold the killer culpable. I think it's too easy to, to blame the gun, the gun manufacturer, the NRA, millions of lawful gun owners, but they didn't pull the trigger. The evil man did. Yeah, but the, the obvious reaction is, yeah, great, go ahead and take the corpse of that guy and put him on trial. It doesn't matter when crazy people do this and kill themselves, so we're not going to hold him responsible. He's, he's gone. We have to. Even though it doesn't feel like justice because he's dead, he's the one that pulled the trigger. It's just like a, a drunk driving accident. You know, it's not Chevrolet. It's not, it's not... Uh, Shmirinov. You know, it's the driver. The driver, whether he perishes, does a lot of damage or not, it's the driver that's held accountable. Bring it to Colorado. It's odd that Colorado continues to turn more blue, but I believe on guns it is turning more pro-gun. I'm not going to say red because I don't think it's a red, uh, red-blue thing. More and more people are accepting guns as part of the culture here. I don't think we're going to see massive gun reg uh, regulation here, uh, even when the Democrats, if the Democrats get back in. I think we have to fight it because I look at it as if you're taking away my ability to protect myself, Every round in that chamber is an opportunity for me to protect my family and people that I care about. Uh, so you limit that, you limit my opportunities. And how dare they say that? How dare they say Last one. that? People want to go to your school, where do they go? They can find me online, just Google Colorado Boots Firearms. Colorado Boots Firearms. Thank you, thank you. Listen for me on KHOW Radio, read me in the Denver Post, tell a friend about the Independence Institute. We'll see you next week.